So in our previous video, we talked about creating a Windows Server backup. Now let's talk about how you would verify that. Well, we'll start by doing the command git-wbjob. Let me put a G in front of that. Git-wbjob. And then we want to look at the previous one job. And that will give us the information from our previous job. So the job type, the start, the end time, the job state. And then here's a couple of big things is our uh, path. So our success log path and our failure log path. So here's an easy way to grab that other than just having to type that whole thing in. Let's do dollar sign $file equals get wb job dash previous one and then I'm going to pipe that to select object and I want to expand the property success whoops yeah, ex success log path and that should when I type it correctly There we go. That should capture that path in our variable named file. So if this is going to be fairly short, we can just do type dollar sign file and that will display the content. So it'll show us backed up C drive, backed up C data, backed up C colon backslash data backslash sample.txt. Now obviously these can get really, really big. So we could notepad the file if we wanted to display that as something we could scroll through in notepad. We can also look specifically at uh, failures. So I'm just going to up arrow until I get back to this command, and I'm going to do failure log path. Now I can notepad dollar sign file, and I can see any failures. And so we've got our right file backup errors, but notice there are no files here. That means it should have backed up everything correctly. So that's a couple of ways we can look at it. We can look at those job, uh, we can look at the job, and then we can look at uh, the logs. Now we can also look at the files themselves. Now remember, I backed this up to an internal drive, volume of R colon. So I'm going to go to R colon and run my get child item, and you're going to see we've got Windows Image Backup. Now I'm going to go ahead and navigate through this so you can see how it structures this. So we're going to do set location, CD works as well, Windows Image Backup, and then get child item, and we're going to see the server name now. So this time I'll do CD 2019 core, and get child item. So here's where our logs are going to be, here's where our catalog is going to be, and the actual backup file is going to be saved in here. So I'm going to do CD, and I need to put this in a text qualifier, so single quotes. Backup 2020-11-28 space 04-1546. Get my caps lock turned on correctly. And then get child item. And here are all of the files. And so all the XML is going to be data files. You're also going to find, let me do an asterisk.vhdx. We should find a vhdx file. And this is the actual file that's going to contain all the information. So we can look at the size of it and say, all right, that looks good. Or we can actually explore this a little bit more. Now, this is just a VHDX file. So it's a virtual disk file. So we can mount this virtual disk image. And so the easy way to do that, rather than typing in that whole thing, let's do dollar sign $mnt, so I'm just going to create a variable, equals get child item asterisk dot VHDX. And that will find that particular file for me. So dollar sign $mnt now should give me that file. So I want to mount that, so it's going to be mount dash disk image, and I'm going to do dollar sign $mnt dot full name. And that's going to specify that I use the full name property is what I'm using for this mount disk image. 
and that should mount my disk image. So it is now attached, and here's the image path, so it gives me the full path for it, the storage type, the number. All right, now if I do a get volume, you're gonna see that we have another volume mounted here. Right here, the one across the bottom is mounted, but it has no drive letter. So uh, I'm gonna go into my disk part and list volume. And you're going to see volume number three here. So I'm going to select volume three. That'll select the volume. And then to give it a drive letter, I'm just going to type assign, and it will default a drive letter. So disk part successfully assigned a drive letter amount point. So now if I do list volume, there we go you'll see that this is now attached. So volume three, whereas volume three up here didn't have a drive letter set attached. Now it has a drive letter of D attached. So now that I've got that, let me exit out of disk part and go back to, um, well, let's just do a get volume real quick so you can see what we have here. Volume D is attached. So I can just set my location to D colon and then get child item and here's my data folder cd data and now i can navigate through and i can look at every single file uh, in fact let's type sample dot text and basically the backup is just a virtual disk file with all of the data that we told it to back up and just copied it all over into a virtual disk all right, so now I've looked at the job information, I've looked at the logs, and now I've actually opened up the VHDX file and gone in and looked at it. So let me go back to my C drive, and now I want to disk mount, dismount the disk image. So that's going to be, the command is dismount disk image. And then I still have that saved as dollar sign file dot full name. And that should, I don't have it saved as dollar sign file. What did I save that as? Let me scroll back up here and find which variable I used. You know what? It's going to be easier to do it this way. Dollar sign MNT, that's what I uh, called it. All right, so let me dismount disk image dollar sign mnt dot full name and that will dismount notice it now shows that it is attached if I do a get volume that should no longer be attached alright so there we go we have looked at this by opening up the VHD file and looking at the files we've looked at the logs and we've looked at the job information now when you go to verify a backup you don't necessarily have to do all of that. Every now and then you should. Um, but things you'll want to do on a regular basis is the get wb job dash previous one and verify that it completed successfully. And then something that I would also do on a fairly regular basis is I check that failure log path and see if there are any files that did not get backed up that I really needed to get backed up. So those are the things I would check on a consistent uh, basis. Every so often, it's probably worthwhile to go into your success log path and just make sure that the files are getting backed up. <clears throat> not just failures, but making sure that we've got the right things selected that are getting backed up. And then going into the file itself to make sure that the files are readable. All right, there we go. That is how we can verify a Windows Server backup using PowerShell.